Morning. Hi, hey, Mr. Jones. No, no, Frisco. Remember now, Mr. Jones. Frisco. Good morning, Frisco. Um, listen, I, I'd ask you in, but um, I'm getting ready to go to work at the library. Oh, no, see, that's why I'm here. I was going to uh, walk you to the library. You know, you're a very important witness in this case. I just want to offer a little personal cop protection, that's all. Oh, um, Anna Devane's orders? Oh, no. Oh, it's all my idea. Oh. Why does that surprise you? Well, um, a, a great many things surprise me. Um, well... Are you going to, uh, make me stand out here in the cold, or are you going to ask me in? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, come on in. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. Okay. I'll be out here. That's the one I gave you, right? It, it looks silly, doesn't it? No, no, not at all. Well, I, I, I was going to be gone all day, and I, I didn't want to leave it here, so you look silly. It does not look silly. People will laugh. Oh, they will. Do you see me laughing? Well, no. No, hmm? you're... I'm what? What? Well, you're nice. Not like most men. I'm ready. Got your keys and everything? Hat here and we're off. I don't see Lucy call around yet. Why are we here, Felicia? I just want to keep an eye on her and Frisco. I thought you said she was repressed. I just want to take another look at her. Those repressed ones, if they ever break out, Lord help the man who's with them. And in this case, it would be Frisco. I just don't think he could handle her, that's all. You think so? Yes. Yes, he is dedicated to saving Kevin. And when he's dedicated, he gets carried away. That librarian is looking at us. Why exactly are we... Um, I'm doing research on forensic medicine so that I can write a paper on crisis management. <laughs> I can't even understand what you're saying. Well, how does it sound? Uh, very deep. Good. I'm going to get some information on forensic medicine. After all, I'm going to be a cop's wife. It might come in handy. Well, you know, Lucy, it was really nice walking with you. I don't know when I've talked so much. <laughs> oh, hello, Myrna. Hi, Lucy. Here to relieve me? Yeah. Hey, Frisco. Oh, uh, Chief Ramsey, this is Lucy Coe. Oh, Miss Coe, I came by to tell you that the trial will reconvene at 2 o'clock this afternoon. I have to go back there again? I'm afraid so. I understand that you'll be recalled as the first witness. Frisco, I just dread going back in front of all those people. Well, I'll be there to give you moral support. Don't worry about it, all right? 2 o'clock then, right? Yes. Why did I feel sorry for her? She has nothing to be frightened of. Myrna, can you be back about quarter to two to relieve me? Sure, I can. Okay, thanks. You're so kind. You're going to be fine this afternoon. I'll come back and pick you up. Chief Devane and I want to make sure that you get there. Oh, listen, Bert, uh, don't what? worry about it. I'll make, make sure she gets over there. I promise she gets there. Okay, I depend on you. Okay. I know. See how dedicated he is? you have stated that you did not see Kevin in the library the morning of March 17th. I, I did not. Miss Coe, would you speak a little louder, please? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Miss Coe, isn't it possible that you might not have noticed him even though he was there? No, the, the library wasn't very busy that time of the morning. You know Kevin from other times he's been in the library, isn't that so? Yes. Does he come there often? Yes. And you've noticed him every time he's been in the library? Well, he, he's always polite and friendly. A, a person notices. Do you remember any other specific times when he was in the library? The objection, Your Honor, the question mm -hmm. seems immaterial and irrelevant. What is the defense's purpose in pursuing this line of questioning? Well, Your Honor, I think it's important to ascertain the reliability of the witness's memory. Objection over rules. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Ms. Cole, can you remember any other specific time other than March 17th when you saw Kevin in the library? 
Miss Cole, please answer the question for the court reporter. Nodding won't do. March 12th. March 12th. Yes, that was the last time I saw Kevin in the library. Now, how can you be so sure of that date, March 12th? Well, I, I had a dentist appointment the next day because I um, had this really terrible toothache. It was all I could do to stay on the job, and it made me kind of irritable, and well, I'm usually not. But Kevin and this girl were whispering and, and laughing. No more questions, Your Honor. I would like to redirect, Your Honor. Proceed. Well, what girl? Well, I, I don't know. Just, just some girl, maybe a, a student. I, I'm not sure, but I, I had to go over there and tell them to be quiet. Miss Coe, you have testified that on March 12th, Kevin O'Connor was in the library with a young woman. Yes, sir. Would you describe for us, please, this young woman? There was no young woman. Kevin, there was no girl. Why are you lying? Sit down, sit down. Why are you lying? Hey, Kevin, sit down. Order in the courtroom. Please sit down, Kevin. Mr. Meyer. Kevin, sit down. Mr. Meyer. Yes, Your Honor. If the accused makes another display like that, I will have him removed from the courtroom. Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed with the redirect, Mr. Madison. Thank you, Your Honor. Let's go. Uh, do you remember my last question? Yes, you, you asked me to describe the girl that was with Kevin. Mm -hmm. um, she was young and, and kind of flashy, and, and she had on a headband. Now, on the morning of the 12th, was the accused there to meet this girl? Objection, Your Honor. Asking the witness for an opinion. If, indeed, there was a girl there. Oh, Your Honor, I, I hadn't quite finished my question, although I do understand the defense objection. Well, what is the question, Mr. Madison? I will reframe it. Miss Cole, you said that Kevin and this girl were in the library laughing and talking. Now, do you remember if Kevin O'Connor had a book with him from the library at the time? Uh, yeah. He had, he had taken out a book. Do you happen to remember what book it was? Well, it, it's funny that you ask that, because I do remember, and the reason I remember... First, it, but do, do you remember the book? Yes, it, it was a forensic reference book on the patterns of criminal behavior. Ah. And now you may tell us why you remember so clearly. Well, like, like I said before, I, I had this terrible toothache and so I was really irritable and I, I was going over to tell Kevin to be quiet and, and when I got there I noticed he turned down a, a corner of the page of, a, of the book and that made me more angry and so I asked him to stop defacing public property and, and well I felt so terrible so I normally wouldn't be that angry I wouldn't dare do that now Miss Coe I want to ask you uh, one more question and I know it your answer will be of interest to the defense as well. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Stick to your own line of reasoning, Mr. Madison. Yes, Your Honor. Miss Cole, how is it that you can be so sure that Kevin O'Connor was not in the library in the morning of March 17th? Well, I, I never want to hurt anybody. Your answer, please. Well, I, I went back and I, I rechecked my, my personal library files and I, I found that Kevin had asked to reserve a reference book on March 17th and he, he never showed up to pick up the book. Thank you, Miss Coe. No further questions, Your Honor. The prosecution rests its case. Mr. Meyer? No further questions, Your Honor. We're going to have to put you on the stand, Kevin. Witness may step down. Court is recessed for 15 minutes. All right. Yes. 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 Kevin, I want you to keep in mind that you're under oath. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Will you swear that you were at the medical library at the university on the morning of March 17th? I was there, and I swear it. What time were you there? 
I was there between 8 a.m. and 8.45 a.m. And why is it you're so sure of the time? Because I know I had to be at the hospital at 9 a.m., so when I went into the library, I had kept track of the time so that I wouldn't be late. You remember being there on March 12th? Yes, I was there, but not with any such girl as Miss Cole described. Did you take out a book on forensics? I took out a book, but not on that subject. I was doing a paper on the structure of the inner ear that day. So Miss Coe was mistaken about the book you had. Yes, she was. It was not about criminal behavior. No. Was there a girl there, Kevin? No, there was not. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Madison. Thank you, Your Honor. Why didn't you pick up the book you had reserved on March 17th? Well, I only had 45 minutes, and I had to write up the notes I'd taken from class. I was in kind of a hurry, so I forgot the book. Hmm. I was there, though. Don't you find it odd that Miss Cole remembers you so clearly at other times you were in the library, such as on March 12th? What I find odd is what she remembers about me. I was not there with any girl, and I certainly wasn't reading any book on criminal psychology or whatever. You accused her of being a liar before you came to the stand. Do you really think she's lying, Mr. O'Connor? Your Honor, sir. Yes? I'm confused about a lot of this. But I would like to apologize for the outburst that I had. And I'd also like to apologize to Mrs. Coe. To Miss Coe as well? Yes. I'm ashamed of calling her a liar. Now I know she seems like a nice sweet girl who would never lie, and I can't believe she would lie about anything like that. But I'm confused. So she must be confused too. And that's the only way I can understand this. But I swear to you, Your Honor, I was in that library on the morning of March 17th. You have to believe it. No more questions, Your Honor. Court is adjourned for the day. All right. yourself up on that witness stand. It was, was wonderful. I was scared and upset and confused. It was just terrible. I, I just felt like a fool. You weren't. You you were right up there. You you did what you had to do and it took courage. It took a lot of guts to stand up in front of a murder and nail him to the wall like that. Well, I wanted to be a million miles away. Well, that may be where you wanted to be, but you were right there. And it took courage. It took a lot of Courage. Well, I wanted to run. But you didn't. You stayed right there and you hung in. You know, a lot of people would really worry about a guy like that getting out of jail a few years from now and wanting revenge. Oh, I, I hadn't thought of that. Well, don't worry about it. I'll keep an eye on you, if you let me. Well, you're, you're going to be a real policeman soon, aren't you? I'm working on it, yeah. Oh, well... It'll, it'll be good to know a policeman if Kevin ever gets out of jail. <laughs> no one's going to harm you. You've been really a good friend. I want to be. You don't seem like you trust men very much. Oh, well, I'm, I'm afraid of most men, but I, I, I trust you. You're the first man I, I've ever trusted. Oh, dear, I'm, I'm forgetting my manners. What? Would you like a cup of herb tea? I would love a cup of herb tea. You really would? I really would. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Frisco, would, would you like a slice of homemade plum cake? Did you make it? 
No, my, my Aunt Alma made it. She, she sent it to me. She, she's really nice, and, and she's never gotten married either. Oh, I would love a slice. I can't stay too long. I have to go and uh, start cracking the books. I have an exam at the police academy. Okay, well, it, it'll just take two minutes for the kettle to boil. Okay.